be a great player in a game that's not being played. I don't. I want to. I want to change. I want to grow, and uh, and collaborate. <laughs> Notice how I got that in there. <laughs> um, so. The market's changing. The market has changed a lot over the last few months. Homes are staying on the market longer. Homes, there are a lot of price reductions. Um, expired listings are, are happening. So, you know, things, things are changing. And you know what? It's not for the, the, the worse. It's actually for the better, I think. We're in, in, into a, what I refer to as a, a, a normal market now, as opposed to that crazy market that we're in for, oh, probably better part of a year, where you're working with a buyer and, and you, you're submitting multiple offers and, and uh, properties are selling at, at above list price. I mean, it was, it was horrible. So, you know, uh, and all of us working um, with buyers at that time were, were like, oh, I hope it changes, I hope it changes. And then a lot of us are saying, oh, it's changing. I don't like what's changing, but, <coughs> but it's changing and we gotta change with it. We have to be that player in the changing market. Um, so if you want to thrive in a more challenging market, you need to forge a mindset which it will make you more resilient and more savvy and a little hungrier than your complacent competitors. So what we need to do is we need to get back to the basics, you know, and you know, for some of us, so, so for a, a newer agent, you know, the basics, we don't know the basics. But for an experienced agent, you know, we know the basics, but we kind of had to we had to get away from the basics for a period of time because it was just a, a different crazy, uh, crazy market. So what I did is I took about a handful of lead sources and we're just going to talk briefly, I think I have five different lead sources, we're going to talk briefly on each lead source and uh, maybe, maybe give you a couple of different ideas on what to do to generate business in this changing market. So the first lead source, and it should be everybody's main lead source, is your database, your sphere of influence, your past clients. That should be everybody's main lead source. So uh, you know, what do you do to get business out of, out of that lead source? What, what, is, what are some people doing? Ask for it. What's that? Ask for it. Ask for it. You gotta ask for it. So yeah. So, um, your, your database has to be your main lead source. Some of the things that I, I wrote down are, first of all, you need to have a CRM. You have to have a CRM. Whether it's our, our CRM in the website, or Top Producer, Realty Juggler, Lion Desk, there's a lot of great CRMs out there. If you want to talk about CRMs, I'm more than happy to talk about CRMs with you. Um, you have to have a minimum of 28 touches per year on your uh, database. You know, like, people are like, 28 touches? How do I, uh, you know, touch you know them 28 times? So here's here's how it breaks down. It's really easy. You know, one email per month, and we're talking minimum standards here. One email per month. So there's 12 touches right there. One snail mail per month. You know, whether you send out a just listed or just sold or, or a handwritten card saying, hey, how you doing? You know, um, one snail mail per month. So there's 24 touches right there. And then the other four touches are pick up the phone. Pick up the phone and call them. One time per quarter, quarter call your database. Call your past clients and sphere of influence. Let them know that you're thinking about them. And it doesn't have to be a salesy call. It could just be a call like, hey, how you doing? You know, happy new year. You know, there's a lot of different reasons to, to call them. Um, another uh, possible touch would be a tax letter. This is a perfect time to send out a tax letter. And I, I had one years ago, and I couldn't find it, so I Googled. I love the Google. <laughs> so I just said, um, tax letter from realtors, is, I think is what I Googled. And I came, and I, I came up with this, it actually came from realtor.com. It says, hello, first name. Yeah, it was a pleasure working with you on your recent uh, real estate transaction. Attached, please find a copy of your settlement statement for your recent home purchase or sale. If you haven't received a copy already, please keep one for your current records and provide one to your CPA. Boom, 
Send that out with a copy of the, the uh, closing statement. They'll love you for that because they're not having to scramble through all their documents to find their closing statement for their tax. And sometimes they don't even think about that they need that for their taxes. So that's uh, an idea. Um, do Popeyes. Popeyes, uh, everybody know what a Popeye is? Yeah. So Popeyes are great. Um, I have a, a client um, that uh, for their clients or past clients' birthdays, they get they take a, a cupcake, and just a cupcake, and, and it's just you know another little touch. Uh, lunch meetings and coffee meetings. You know, there's a book out there that's uh, that's called Never Eat Alone. So um, always be having coffee meetings and lunch meetings with your past client's sphere of influence. Client appreciation events are big. Um, you know, whether it's you know uh, some some agents rent out movie theaters. I mean that's big, but you can get your your uh, partners to help you with that. Um, my brother in California owns a mortgage company in California. What he does every year is you know they have the uh, California Angels or whatever they're called now. They changed the name. It's stupid. Anyway, so he does a. Um, uh, a, a parking lot in the parking lot. He pulls out barbecues, and they, they uh, ha he has all of his past clients come in, and then they go watch the game together. So, and he gets you know referrals as a result. Um, there's a pie. You could do a pie giveaway. You can do a pumpkin patch. You could do wine and cheese parties. There's all sorts of things that you could do for your um, past clients. So that's database past clients. Um, next, next up is uh, geographic farming. Still a great way, again, getting back to basics. What can you do on geographic <coughs> farming? You, um, regular monthly touches. You have to touch them on a regular basis so that they constantly know whether it's sending them something in the mail or outdoor knocking. Um, to, and if, if you're doing a, um, uh, where you actually live, it's even better because you have their best interest at heart. Um, you do community garage sales. Um, when I used to farm years ago, um, I would do a community garage sale. And um, you know, it's a great way, again, to meet your uh, neighbors. Now, I'm, I'm more than happy to go into more detail on these, uh, on these things with you. Just reach out to me. Um, Facebook group. So when I, uh, when I moved back to town, I moved back, I moved to uh, Rhodes Ranch. And I immediately went on Facebook and I looked up, you know, Rhodes Ranch, you know, and, and to find some Facebook groups. And there was one um, that seems to be pretty active. And uh, come to find out, and I joined it right away, come to find out it was put together by uh, an, a realtor. And he's active, and he's, it's funny because he's not in there um, saying, hey, use me, use me all the time. He's just, you know, you know posting stuff about what's going on and, and people will click on him. They know he's a, a, a realtor. So it doesn't have to be a real salesy thing. Um, but yeah, use Facebook for uh, your, uh, your geographic farming. <coughs> open houses. I know some of you do uh, open houses um, and um, they are a great way to generate business. Um, so here's a couple of things I wrote down for open houses. Signs. Lots of signs. The more signs, the better. Um, I had a guy uh, years ago tell me about, um, he did a lot of open houses. He started out with you know, four to six signs, and then um, you know, he started using 10 signs and started getting more business as a result. And then he went to 15 problems. signs. It's a problem sometimes. Don't, you don't do it in you know, areas that you can't do it. You gotta know the statutes. Henderson, you can't do uh, lots of signs. Uh, Desert Shores, you can't do lots of signs. So, you know, some areas you could do it, some areas you can't. But um, what else? Use, use video, right Jesse? And Facebook Live for your uh, open houses. Um, there's um, Brokers opens are good to use as well. So do brokers opens. It's it's good to get the feedback from from other agents as well as you know it shows that your sell it shows your seller that you're being proactive and collaborating and collaboration <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. Uh, next up on the list is direct mail. Yes, direct mail still works. Um, uh, in, I've, in, in the past, years ago, when I was doing a lot of 
um, just listed, just sold. You know, here's the thing you got to know your numbers. It was uh, on the average of every 500 pieces that I would send out, I would get another piece of business, whether it was a buyer or a seller. So, um, just listed, just sold. What else can you direct mail? Uh, oh, out of town owners. So, what I did years ago is I had my title company pull up a list of uh, people that own houses here, um, but their mailing address is out of state. And I would mail to them. At, at that time, I was doing a letter, and then in, um, in Utah, I did something similar. I sent out a, a postcard. It says, what you need to know about selling your property when you don't live near it. It was just a big postcard. And, and on the back side it says, um, you know, free consumer guide, no obligation mailed uh, to your home. So I would send that out to um, people that, that owned houses out of state. Um, uh, owned houses here but lived out of state. And then I thought, well, why don't I just send to the property addresses all as well? Because we know that there's renters in those. So I had this this uh, card made. It says, if you make rent payments, you need this consumer guide. And then I I would make up a, a consumer guide or or go to the Google. You can find you know guides for everything. <laughs> the Google. Gotta love the Google. <laughs> what else do I have here? Um, I'm getting tingled. So direct mail works. Expired listings. Like I said, we're having more expired listings come on the market. There's an agent. I forget where she at. Somewhere on the East Coast. So she was, Carolyn Young was her name. You can look her up. She's a, she was a 24-year veteran earning already between four and $500,000 a year. Um, decided that she needed a new lead source, so she started working in expireds. And in 2017, she set 122 listing appointments in one year. Uh, she took 115 listings that year. Now, some of them were carried over from leads that she had from the previous year, but she took 115 expired listings that year and sold 63 of those listings in 2017 for an additional $625,000 of, of GCI. So, um, yeah, expired listing, another great lead source. So, time to get back to basics. I got one thing, one more thing to share with you. It's a story I read on Facebook. Where else do you read things nowadays? <laughs> so um, it's it's a broker. I think she's out of Utah, my old stomping grounds, and she wrote this. It's called the Year of the Buffalo. Kind of like the Year of Collaboration. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, there are many great lessons on leadership and success in life, and one of my favorite is about the buffalo. A full-size buffalo weighs approximately 2,000 pounds and has an e Am I boring you? Yeah. No. <laughs> has, has an enormous head, a considerable shoulder hump, and has an extremely thick and woolly coat. He has massive muscles. Interestingly enough, he uses his head like a snow plow often swinging his head from side to side to clear away windblown snowdrifts so that it can more easily walk through them. Most storms come from the west and roll across the Rocky Mountains to the east. Cattle living on the plains cope with the storms very differently. They have a natural sense that a storm is coming and they turn and run from the storm. Now they are slow animals and are walking with the storm prolonging their pain, and this makes them stay in the storm much longer. The buffalo are very unique in the animal world. They turn their faces into the storm, go to the top of the ridge, and wait it out. When the storm rolls past them, they have minimized their pain because they face it and are quickly through it. They simply tough it out. We all have things in our lives that we hate to do. We hate getting up early, working out, very few of us really like getting up at 4.30 in the morning and, and at the gym by 5, but it hurts just as bad getting up at, at you know 5.30 in the morning and getting to the gym at 6. It's the first 10 minutes or so when we, we need to put our face to the pain and be done with it. 
just like the buffalo on the ridge. We would rather spend money than save it. We, we need just a little discipline to say no to a purchase and put money aside to save for another day. Can we choose the salad over the hamburger? I need to do that a little more. Uh, what, we, uh, what will make us feel better and give us more energy? Naturally, we most often want to take the easier path. We are human. Most important is the choice we make and how, to, how we respond to its outcome. Do we use our buffalo mentality in everything we do in our daily lives? Do we take the stairs? Where's Allison? We take the stairs, don't we, Allison? That, that's something that Allison uh, uh, and I talked about. And that we're, our, our office is up on the third floor. We take the stairs all the time. So um, thought about you when I read that one, Allison. So do we take the stairs? Where am I? Are we aware of our triggers and our hot buttons that, that set us off, and off on the wrong track? Do we choose a TV over a great motivational book? In what direction are we headed? What do we want out of life? Ultra performers decide to face the storm by making better choices. Uh, they weather it out and minimize the painful things in life. Let's put our faces to the storm and embrace it. That's all I got for you.